My name is Hyman Rickover, and I'm credited with being the father of the nuclear-powered Navy. I was born in Poland. I was Jewish. We moved to America early in my life. I was accepted to and attended the United States Naval Academy and then served on active duty for a record 63 years before I was forced to retire. During my career, I qualified for service on surface ships, submarines, maintenance facilities, and served for a period with what later became the Atomic Energy Commission. My transformative event was driven by war, the threat of war, and the development and use of nuclear energy as a bomb. That event opened the door for a vision, propelling submarines using nuclear power. I heeded my own intuition, judgment, and audacity to approach Admiral Chester Nimitz to head the developmental program. I received his blessing and appointment. My objective was physical, a nuclear reactor on board a submarine, providing power of unlimited duration and doing so safely. I had the perfect background. I was an engineer. I understood complex development projects. I knew how to drive technical people to excellence. I knew the Navy. My peers were stymied and held back by regulations and bureaucracy. I hated regulations and bureaucracy. I had a talent to lay things out in providing detailed presentations which created confidence with stakeholders. <coughs> My timing was perfect. We were facing potential destruction by the now defunct Soviet Union. Their threats to annihilate us were to be taken seriously and our intended response was deterrence. The nation needed a response. I provided it. A stealthy and silent submarine, laden with weapons, roving the world's oceans without needing to refuel. I led the effort in this development, creation, and operation, and extended it to nuclear-powered surface ships. Imagine the challenge. Our experience with nuclear power came through the development and use of nuclear bombs to end war with Japan. Our scientists realized that the product of a nuclear chain reaction was energy. My challenge was to not only harness it, but to encase it and place it into a submarine where it would have to be operated in such a controlled manner that it would not harm submariners and never, ever grow critical to become uncontrolled on an extremely tight program schedule. Complex development projects were something I had learned through the Navy and used that experience to conceptualize and drive the project. My program's accomplishments have been heralded as the best development project ever. I did not reach that objective alone. I prided myself in the choice of people who came into my program. I personally interviewed over 14,000 applicants. Very few of them ever forgot that experience. <laughs> My staff searched their academic record, their accomplishments, judged their potential. They sent me the best of the best to see me. I wasted little time. My questions were direct and to the point. I made the last judgment. I wanted problem solvers, men who could think on their feet, no, while running, to avoid and prevent problems, to solve problems, to give me straight answers in success as well as in failures. I do not believe in hierarchy. As my organization grew, I increased the number of leaders directly reporting to me. Should a challenge arise, a problem, they were not just to tell me about the problem, but to find the answer, to be accountable, never passing the buck. Another cornerstone in my program's success came from the coalition I built with politicians and contractors. I needed that coalition to advance the program, to overcome the incessant resistance within my own naval service and the morass of regulations driven by good-for-nothing bureaucrats. My support came from the Congress and from presidents. I rewarded my people, not with awards, but with more responsibility. Their pride came from accomplishments. It was their driver. 
They deserve being considered special. Again, the bureaucracy and regulations were of no help as promotion in the Navy are by quota. So many slots allotted to each area in the service. My officers still did extremely well, with a good number rising to the highest ranks. When the people in the program left the service, I hired many to fill civilian posts because they understood the way we worked, how we did things, and the accountability that came with responsibility. Ultimately, the proof in the transformation comes from not just developmental success, but through the many years that the vessels in the nuclear navy have operated without a reactor accident. My reactors succeeded even in tragedy. In the 1960s, two submarines went into uncontrolled dives and sank in the ocean. They were crushed. The reactors are lying on the sea floor, having been exposed to seawater for decades, and radiation emissions have been repeatedly checked. They are safe. Some consider my highlighting this point as being callous as many died. I grieve for them and their families and honor their memories, but I still hold myself accountable for the safety of those reactors. They did not cause the accident, nor have they become a safety issue for the environment. I pursued my mission of creating and operating the nuclear navy with zeal and expertise. At the end, I was forced to retire. The bureaucracy didn't have the guts to tell me. My wife read it in that morning's newspaper. I was summoned to the White House where I met with the President, who gave me what he considered was a gracious way out by becoming a trusted consultant. I resented that approach. I told him that's BS and walked out. He didn't attend my funeral. Obviously, I didn't miss him. I have been criticized for holding back subsequent developments in reactor design. Well, my view is that if they had a better plan, they should have found a way to convince me with a plan of how they approach would advance the transformation. They didn't. I led a full life, served my country, accomplished my objectives, and drove people to success through assumption of responsibilities, accepting accountability, and meeting objectives. Isn't that what is needed today? Thank you.